All right, ladies, we're going to get started. Thank you for coming out. My name is Kathy Choi. I am an MBA grad class of 96. I did bet someone unofficially that I would be the oldest person in the room from an alumni standpoint. I know, <laughs> but it's okay. Sorry. Listen, we're, we're going to stick together. That's how we do it. Um, we're, I'm part of a alumni committee. I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but there's a group of women alumni for Stern. And we just recently formed about a year ago. And what I'll say to you is I'm class of 96. I did not re-engage with Stern until a year ago. So I kind of fell off the map like many of us do. Raised two girls, running a business, traveling and the whole nine yards. Um, so it's never too late to re-engage with Stern. So I commend you for coming out. And there's, there's a couple different ways that you can stay connected. So never fear. It's like the home, like you said. It's always, we're always here. You know where Stern is. And you're always welcome. We're thrilled to partner with OCD, which is the Office of Career Development, to sponsor this event today. Um, working motherhood is obviously a, a topic that's very important to all of you, which is why you're here, as well as myself. So my, I have two girls who are 12 and 16. I've heard a lot of you have younger kids, so I promise you it does get easier. <laughs> the thing that gets harder is they talk back more. <laughs> Um, and they get smarter about how to talk back, but it does get easier to, to balance. Um, this, this event would not be possible without Jennifer Schwartz, who's sitting here to my left. She's class of 2013, so she really put the entire event together. Uh, she's the brand leader at Pernod Ricard, and her famous Monkey 47 gin is back there at the table, so if you haven't tried it, please do so afterwards. Um, and I would, I would ask all of you to think about how, you know, if this is a meaningful night for you, how easy it is to reconnect with Stern. There's really three different ways. One, come to events like this. And so we'll make sure that you guys are on the email list. It's, as, it's a very low commitment and you'll get to meet old friends and new friends. Two is hire, if you can and have influence on hiring people, hire Stern alumni. I just hired two Stern women in my company of 50, right? And so now I'm re-engaging them to come back to events. We just went to... Um, the big swib thing that happens every once a year, and they had not come back to Stern. They had not been downtown, actually, since they left uh -huh. and had their children as well. Um, and last but not least, of course, if you can donate your time, because you guys are all so talented, we, if we put our ta time and talent to use, we really can spread the word about how amazing Stern women are in the world. So I appreciate your time, and with that, I will pass it over to Jennifer. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks, everyone, for coming um, with the need for everyone to have deliberate yeses in their life. So time is a scarce commodity and a valuable resource. Um, should you get nothing out of this evening, I hope that everyone gets really good champagne and <laughs> gin and cocktails. Um, so thank you very much for coming. Um, uh, just a brief background on how we got here, and some of you are more familiar with this, but Beth Briggs in the Office of Career Services was a huge um, like mentor and, and, and valuable resource to me here at Stern. And we re-engaged back in the fall when I actually had time, whatever that was. Um, and through talking about the fact that I felt like, oh, like I have this like 15 month old and I can finally like go and have like a breakfast meeting with someone and like, why am I doing this? You know, she was asking me how I felt like I'd gotten to this point and I felt like I was successful first and foremost because of my Stern network, and whether it was a text chain of classmates, many of whom are here today, five out of six, um, or like friends on Instagram DM feed who are literally answering questions of mine one off, I was like, I would not have been able to get through the transition of like becoming a working mother if it were not for my Stern group of friends. That, and then of course having a job and a role, I wanted to get us together to dig in a little bit deeper about how other people have done the transition successfully, or they may not even want to say they've done it successfully, but like if you're alive and you're here, <laughs> cheers, you were successful. Um, and see like what their, what recipes there may be to success. And while there is a book called The Fifth, Fifth Trimester and Lauren Smith Brody did an amazing Google talk that was emailed in the Park Slope parents group and I watched it early on even though I didn't read the book because I didn't have enough hands to read or the time <laughs> and I still don't. Um, the information is super relevant and it's really, really great and I do recommend it. Um, it very much focuses on those first few weeks getting to like six months back at work. And it is hard to read, I think, a book and then figure out like, oh, I'm gonna like ace the exam. Whereas I feel like it has just been a constant stream of like texts and emails and conversations with people. And so if there is like one objective, I think for tonight, it's seeing if there is valuable information to come out of 
pulling Stern alums together and is there an opportunity for Stern to keep the conversation growing and going with their alumni network, not just working mothers, but working parents, the LGBT community, people who have adopted children. This is just my story and my friend's stories and one sort of way in there, but the Stern community was so amazing to me while I was here and I feel like there's an opportunity to further invest in working parents and working mothers considering the level of talent we have and the fact that we're all in New York City, which is an amazing thing to have at our disposal. So with that said, um, the three panelists up here tonight are Laura Buena de Greco, graduated in 2012 and works at J&J, &J. not only works at Johnson & Johnson, but was named Working Mother of the Year by J&J &J and has not one, not two, but three children. So she's like <laughs> our mothering expert on the panel. Um, Jessica Lestgart in Port Manche, uh, also graduated in our year, 2013, and works as a VP at Digitas in the data strategy division, and, and has one child, two years, just moved into a forward-facing car seat, so very, very <laughs> important. Um, and Jackie Walters Park graduated also 2013 and works at COO of Red Rabbit, which is responsible for delivering healthy meals to schools, and has a 18-month-old um, and lives in Brooklyn. So did I cover everything for the most part? I think that's me like, writing down your bios and remembering. Um, really quick before we get on, so we have the most valuable conversation, just like a quick show of hands. Are people, and I saw some people who are in the pregnancy area, but like pre having a family, can I get a quick like woo woo or a clap or something pre? And then everyone if, like post is more or less the majority of where we are with some like nods and stuff like that. Um, we're going to just start off a little bit in the beginning because I think it's relevant to a few people in the room and maybe you'll be going through pregnancy again at something one point and I think it's interesting to learn about what you may do differently. So we're just going to start off there and then sort of get to the actual part of mat leave and coming mm -hmm. back and what that means. Um, so I'm going to start with my friend Jackie who uh, waited a slightly long time, I think it was five months to tell your employer. So my question is, what were you doing in the meantime of getting ready to tell your employer and like what the delivery meant to you? Yeah, I think I've been trying to reflect on the why. Like why did I, I, I literally waited, I think it was 20 or 22 weeks until I told my boss, which is absurd, I realize. Um, but I think it was like, there were a lot of emotions that were going through my head and I think it was sort of one part fear and one part control. Um, I really liked my life. I thought it was great and I didn't feel like I wanted to change anything. And so I think I was very afraid to tell my boss um, who is a amazing entrepreneur of, and a dad. So no real reason for me not to tell him. Um, but I was, I was afraid that that would change my role in the organization. And I was afraid that just him knowing that I was going to need to leave for a few weeks um, was going to actually like, affect my performance, even though I was working harder than ever. Um, and so I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how I wanted to say it, what I wanted to say, um, per some advice I had gotten from an amazing group of stern people, um, what I needed to be prepared with. Like, here's when and how long I'm going to leave. I, need, I felt like I needed to have all of that under control before I actually had that conversation. Um, and so. When I finally did have the conversation, it was probably the same conversation that everyone has just eight weeks before I had mine, um, and it was fine. But I needed, I needed that semblance of like, this is mine to tell um, before I said it. And you work in a very small company, so did you have a backfill as like an option for when you were gonna be leaving work? No, not at all. So I have, there's 115 employees at my, in my um, company, but the, like 90 of them are hourly employees because we make we make food from scratch every day. So we have chefs and delivery people, and um, so my team, which is about 20 people, nobody had kids, nobody had anything, and there certainly was no budget for me to um, have a backfill. So I needed to have a master plan of who's going to take what. I had an mm. open slot on my team that I needed to hire for, um, and so I had to. I want. I felt like I needed to have a plan, which was as we all know, the best plans are, I don't know, even, what's the phrase? <laughs> the best don't plans. bother, is the phrase. <laughs> Jess and Laura, because you yes. both work at larger companies, mm -hmm. did you have a maternity backfill as a part of the deal of going on mat leave? 
So I had a backfill, but that was not, at least at the way, the way it works at Digitas, is that wasn't necessarily my backfill to choose or my plan to construct. It okay. was something that I worked with my manager to figure out what was the plan for while I was out. There is always someone to cover, and whether or not it's a hire or not. Okay. So in my situation, it was, we do rotations a lot. It's an ad agency. So it happened to be someone who was rotating into, the, my, my team was growing anyway, so it was kind of a fuzzy gray area. But yes, I had a backfill, but that was definitely not part of the initial conversation on my side. And have you had a mat backfill for like all three of your pregnancies? So, because um, this is clearly something that is instrumental <laughs> to like being able to leave your job 100%. and then coming back. Because then who, and I didn't, what, we'll get to with that in a second, but you ended up having a backfill or you had like a replacement? I had a couple of things. So I had, I had an open slot on my team and I panic picked, hired someone. So I literally had six weeks before I was going on leave and I had a handful of relatively okay candidates and I just hired someone. And then I actually brought someone back who had been, um, who had been a former employee who happened to be available for the summer. And so I brought her back remotely. So yes, I ended up right before the end feeling like I needed someone to do just some more work for everybody who was going to do more work. I needed another set of hands. Mm -hmm. And that panic picked person <laughs> fell through at some point. Oh yeah, she, was, she lasted six months and then she was gone. But like <laughs> you've moved on, like that did not negatively impact no your job. No regrets, it was great. Okay. <laughs> and so sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off before, no. but for each of your three, like is that something that J&J &J has in place? Because it is a place that's known for being a great employer yes. for working parents. Yes, 100%. I, I have three kids, but I had two maternity leaves because my first I had here. So Beth and maybe your class probably okay. saw a prego lady walking around the halls. Now that you say so that. So I, I was the, remember. yeah, I was the um, MBA two walking around with a big belly, but I had Leo. We have one of those here last, tonight too, so. Between my last two semesters. Um, but when um, I went out on leave with Oliver and Amelia on both of those occasions, it was more of your case. Um, so I feel for you because I did not have to map out um, like exactly how my work needed to be structured. I just needed to give notice and I knew that the team would do um, what was needed, whether it was rotate someone mm -hmm. in or, um, or spread the workload okay. to ensure that not only my work was covered, but that I also had a spot coming back. And so that was, mm -hmm. I think, something that was really reassuring was that my director at the time was like, take as much time as you need, which I think it implicitly was like, take as much time as is allotted to you. Um, <laughs> and how much was that at J&J? &J? At J&J, &J, interestingly enough, at that time, um, so this was like 2014, um, we only had six weeks covered. So even though we were known externally as being this, you know, very much like family focused company at the time, we really had limited covered pay. So then it was like borrowing it from New Jersey and you know, doing a lot of like that and vacation maneuvering to ensure that you got a little bit of time. But then I had the flexibility to take some unpaid time. Um, and then fortunately or serendipitously, I came back to work and J&J um, &J changed their policy and they grandfathered everybody who had had a child the year before. That's amazing. Um, and so some of that unpaid leave that I had taken, I was actually, um, you know, made whole. Yeah. So that's great. As, so as you get really close to yeah having your child, and you can hopefully plan out as much as you can, and you're getting ready to go on your maternity leave. Jess, you met with HR mm -hmm. and like had a very detailed plan, it yep. sounds like. Yep. Can you elaborate a little more on yes. like what led you to like go on maternity leave and be rest assured that everything was Yes, so I was very fortunate in that there was someone I knew who worked in another department, but I had worked with on my account, who had gone out and had a baby like Six months before, she just came back right right as I was telling people. I mean, side note, she actually went and had another baby like nine months later, but that's <laughs> so, and then left the company. But she, I knew she had somehow maximized her time off. So I went to her, I told her like really early. She was one of the first people to know. And I said, okay, tell me what do I need to know? Because I knew that it was very complex. So she explained to me, because we have all different kinds of days off and all different time codes mm -hmm. and everything. And so she explained to me exactly how she approached it. So when I went into HR, they also explained to me, I mean, I will say Digitas is fantastic with the HR person sat down with me like, I went to my boss, told her, and I had a meeting with HR like two weeks later. So I was meeting with HR before you ever even told your boss. Did anyone um, else not meet with HR? 
Like, I don't know. I, I, like, really I have a job department. It's just like my boss, and that was pretty much it. Okay, mm -hmm. keep going. Well, so I had, and mine wasn't even like our HR person. This was the benefits coordinator yep. person. Mm -hmm. She had a whole folder with all these printouts for me. Like they had pre-printed a calendar for me based on my due date. It was well done. It was really supportive, and all of the different programs that Digital House offers and is engaged in, and all of the opportunities to me, um, which was amazing. And most of it I totally forgot about because you put it in the back of your mind. Um, but it's come out since. Anyway, um, so I had a full plan and then I even started strategizing, being like, well, what if I took, had this many days off left over at the end of the year, can you help me? And they literally put together a calendar, they put in my timesheets while I was out on, on mat leave. So I actually didn't even have to think about any of it. Um, and I will say for me, I ended up having a very complicated third trimester. Everything was fine, and then third trimester, everything got a little complicated. So it became a, well, let's see if you can make it to 32 weeks. Mm -hmm. And then let's see if we can make it to 34 weeks. So it became this game of, you could go out on mat leave literally any day. Um, and HR was working hand in hand with me the whole time to make sure that I still got as much time as humanly possible. Because at the time, we had actually just changed our policy as well, just before I got pregnant. So we got three months off. I managed to make it um, a full four months and a little bit plus a little bit, um, which was fully paid. My I ended up having a different job when I came back, but that's a whole other mm -hmm. line of discussion. Um, but uh, it was it was really well, really well orchestrated. Awesome. Um, we're gonna get but to I that discussion in a minute. <laughs> I was but, like, I was like <laughs> but I think similarly to how you have to be kind of like the owner of your own career and yeah. you know, reach out to folks. I think it's really kind of incumbent upon all of us mm -hmm. to do a little bit of that navigation because even as companies as organized as yours or even as large as J&J, &J, we have 135,000 global employees, um, you would think that, and we have an am amazing set of benefits, but you would think everything would be super centralized mm -hmm. in a beautiful folder that right. you could easily navigate from work step A to Z, and that is not the case. And so oftentimes, it's really like groups of women getting together, stitching up a PowerPoint presentation that's mm -hmm. like, okay, first do this, then do that, then call the read group, then. And so in some ways, I think you have to, just for your own sake, to ensure that you maximize the benefits that even some of your organizations right. might have get yourself a little bit organized and strategize mm -hmm. with some folks who've gone through it in the past and then figure out how you're going to pay it forward and, and share it with some other women. And that's why it's great to have like, yes, I had coworkers who were also mothers that I could ask those things to, but that's why it's also really great to have the stern network of people. Like yes. less, those like more sensitive questions yes. that you would just like, you do not want your colleagues to even know that you're thinking about some of these things or asking yes. them. And that's why it all sort of came back to this group of people. <laughs> and um, what I will say is that I didn't know that I actually probably could have gone out earlier yes. and still been fully paid because of the complications I was undergoing. Um, and I found that out after I came back that I actually really could have not come to work. So like her. ask your HR department, ask even if you don't right have any reason to like yes. get involved with them and in the beginning, like always ask. I will say transparency is your friend in this case mm -hmm. because I, I, I found that I had got a lot more support than I would have ever imagined and I continue to get support even now over two years later. True. So as we then go on maternity leave, you come back or you're preparing to come back and it is super scary your brain is like mush. And so when I was asking Laura about how like you prepared for coming back and of course like three subsequent times, <laughs> you had mentioned that like your brain is meant to get mushy and you should like take some sort of comfort in that. Can you elaborate on why like no one should be scared about that when that happens, whether it's like Christmas time, August yeah. or like <laughs> after having a child? Well, I think with my first two, I just chalked it up to I think as many of us do to like hormones and lack of sleep, and that's why my brain is sort of not operating the way it's, I'm used to. But then, before my third, I read this like really interesting article. Um, there's been a couple studies done um, that show that physiologically, the gray matter in your brain has shifted and moved, and they've observed you know, women who go through pregnancy and women who don't. And it's actually like enlarging areas that increase your empathy and your ability to relate to others and respond to others' needs. So in some ways, it's making you more superhuman, right? And, and able to care for this little person. Um, but yeah, it's not gonna operate the same way because st stuff has moved. Um, and so I think it wasn't until my third that I was a lot more like empathetic with myself to like, you know, give myself a little bit more credit if, you know, memory might be dialed down on some things, but I know like s s my other cognitive abilities are actually increasing. And so just 
I don't know, giving a little bit of yourself some, some credit and some benefit of the doubt that stuff has um, changed dramatically and, uh, and you, you need to just be more, I don't know, kind to yourself. You had also mentioned like when you came back, you had systems and processes, which was a very like stern MBA, like type, type uh, A response yeah. of like, can you elaborate on what systems and processes you had in place to like go back to work and be a mother? Sure. Um, so. And you have to like be, get super granular, but it's like high level yeah. what needed to be done and what you got. So I will care. say our minds usually send a, can send us down very dark paths. And so I think especially those three to four weeks before each one of my mat leaves, like whether I was coming back um, from Stern to starting work or on the other two, I, I just remember like the anxiety building and crying for no reason, just with the thought of having to like leave this little baby behind and knowing that I wanted both things and I wanted so badly for both things to work. Um, but then when you actually go through your first day, it's like actually okay. And so if you can sort of like quiet your mind a little bit and enjoy that those last few weeks. But, but meanwhile, also figure out ways that can calm you. So maybe that means creating a checklist and the Google Calendar. And I mean, I definitely had a lot of those systems in place of like a checklist by the door that to remember my pump, bag number one, but when I had to go take two to daycare, it was like bag number one, bag number two, don't forget the stuffed animal, don't forget the bottles, don't forget the formula, don't forget this. So um, just figuring out ways that can take some of that anxiety off. I remember doing a couple dry runs. I mean, call me crazy, but like, you know, just like, okay, I'm gonna wake up at 5.52, I'm gonna nurse 10 minutes, okay, clock it in. And like, all of a sudden after I did that, I was like, oh, maybe it's not gonna be that bad. And so anything to take the edge off before the big day comes. And then knowing that your mind is actually playing tricks on you, that's building up a worse first day than it's actually going to be. Um, we can get into like a long discussion about how like we actually manage our lives and like all the checklists that we need to do. One thing that we are gonna keep touching upon and that Beth and I talked about when we met for breakfast was the fact that I was able to do this given my job, my manager, and I wanted to spend a little bit of time before we get into like a QA. and a And if there, anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, but we have some time for Q&A at the end. Like, you did not work, Jess, at a place that was nominated as like working parent of the year, yet you had these amazing like HR mm -hmm. tools. And Jackie like runs a huge staff and like you're part of the team. And what I want to try to understand is how much did your team structure to, like weigh in or matter to like your transition back in? And so like, do you have any sort of observations or learning into your particular team structure and like your manager and how they relate? And like Jackie, feel free to start. Yeah, um, so I, I think I have, a, I have a really great team, and so being able to kind of divide up and decide who was gonna do what was my, it was my leadership, it was my management, like that was what my job was, and that's what my job is. Um, so that kind of fell really naturally. Um, our executive team has another mom on it, and um, she was incredible. So uh, she, you know, we're not talking about nannies, but like, boy, do I have a good nanny story for afterwards about how much help she has given me in that in that department. So um, I had support and I had people who, um, most of my team is really young, they're millennials and you know, they're, they work really hard and they're like, all right, my boss is having a baby. I don't really know what that's like, but like, what can I do to help? And so once I got the word out, um, I think the team, they stepped up and it was truthfully, they exceeded my expectations. I had very low bar. I was like, they're just a bunch of young people. They don't care about me and my life. And, they really do, it turns mm. out, because they're great humans. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, is that? Yes, and like also the fact that because you lead a really big team, like you were on their schedule. Just, so like you had to balance your work schedule much more, like I have a much more independent role. And so therefore like I can leave at 4.30 if I need to like get the nanny out on time or come in late and if I'm gonna be traveling for work. That flexibility was like instrumental and in having a manager who like left me alone and I couldn't write him enough thank you notes about that. Mm -hmm. Like when you were coming back to work, did you have a tight team schedule that you needed to like follow and slot yourself in or did you have like room to 
mess up a little bit and come back mm -hmm. and make mistakes and like breathe. So I will say, first, when I started at Digital, straight out of business school, actually, my manager was a mom of two little ones. And she was a really great mentor. She left the company, but she was a great mentor in that she put her foot down and she had to leave by a certain time. She went off, she went home and put the kids to bed and then would come back online. And she was always there and was an incredible mentor. Um, and so I kind of took a cue from that, even though it was years later. Uh, when I was coming back, I was actually approached to shift to a slightly different team within the same account. I was very hesitant. I built this team. It was my team. It was my account. Um, and I didn't really want to do it. Were you notified while you were on maternity leave? So notified. So this is where my manager is incredible. And we went out for a few drinks. I will say they were the first drinks I had when I was after having a baby. They hit me hard. Um, <laughs> we had you know, a casual conversation where she basically was like, you've outgrown the role on your team that you had built this team of like 15 people. And we have this new role based on the client's needs have shifted in the four months. This is what I would like you to do. Are you interested in this? And I was like, not really. <laughs> and she was like, okay, let me make this, let, let me ask you again. Right. You're interested in this, right? Because this is the opportunity. Uh, so I took it, we, and we had a little bit of a negotiation. It was gonna be a smaller team. Um, but it was also the same account, a subset, still working under her. Um, Did what you feel I, like it was a demotion? I didn't feel it like was, it was a demotion. It was a slight shift away from my core area of interest and a little bit more into straight analytics, which was less of an interest area for me. But, and it was a slightly different client, and the client had a reputation for being difficult. Um, and so I wasn't as interested, and I was worried about the flexibility. I was really excited about coming back into a role that I knew, to a team that I had built, and something that I, I was very comfortable with. So this was a little scary. Do you feel like she was scary. setting you up for success? Yes. Okay. And I will say, I mean, especially now in hindsight, I'm still, she's still my manager. Okay. She is, I will follow her anywhere. Um, and that's, that's actually a, a really important piece, um, is that I also was able to say to her, for this to work, what I really need, at least at the beginning, is to work from home two days a week. This is, for me, what I need to make it work. Um, is that something that, and I had asked for two with the idea that it was going to be a negotiation point and maybe it would end up being one day a week um, because she realized that I wasn't really happy with this. And I will say that I'm the only mother in my department, in the entire data and analysis department, there are no moms. When you become a mom, most people leave and don't come back. Um, so I think she was very motivated to make something work. Um, and so she said, we'll do it for three months and we'll check in, see how it goes, and you know, then, then we can revisit. Two, over two years later, I still work from home two days a week. Um, and that's an open conversation. It's something we just checked in on. I'm very flexible. There have been months at a time where I don't work from home at all. Um, but my team knows that I'm always available. I will say that that's one of those things where you build up this relationship with mm -hmm. people. Your credibility um, factor. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. The client knew I worked from home. If they ever wanted to have a meeting on a day, I, we never set the days in stone. So that was a key piece. We never said, it's always Wednesdays and Fridays. We would always look at the calendar, look at the week forward, and I would just put the days on that looked like they had the fewest in-person time. I never missed a client meeting in person. I still don't miss a client meeting in person, which sometimes means there are months that I don't get to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but because of that, that flexibility is, it, it's key to my success at this company. And it makes me so much more focused and so much more reliable. I mean, I'm always online it, and it just, it works. So I will say the big takeaway is ask for what you think you need to be successful. Um, and you will find if you have a strong support system and if your manager is really invested in you, it will work. I have a couple more questions before we break for Q&A. And I really want to find out, but maybe we can ask like in Q&A if there's time why most women have left. Yep. We'll get to that, but hopefully <laughs> flag that, flag that for a second. Um, this is your Barbara Walters like, know, investigative right? mode on. J&J um, &J has this reputation as a great company for working parents, and I would love if anyone has any input on this. Do you feel, though, that like you could only be successful as a working parent at those places that are on those lists, or at the end of the day, it comes down always to, like, your role and responsibilities, your manager, your team, and like working within those confines. Because can you work for a company that's great and have a really terrible manager who doesn't support you and vice versa? I'm curious, Jackie, Laura. Yeah, I mean, we're not on those lists. Um, and so I think. 
How has your boss been supportive then to you, to like working in your schedule, leading your team? Yeah, I think, I think first and foremost, like I breastfed for a year in a building that make like it's a factory for all intents and purposes. And so I was the person in the closet with the door locked, with the blinds down, breastfeeding. And I there was a moment in time where I walked up to my boss and something had happened to my milk. And if you guys decide to breastfeed or if you're already breastfeeding, like crying over spilled milk is a real thing. Like <laughs> a real, real thing. Yeah. And something happened to my milk that was in the fridge and it was all over the floor and I started bawling. And this is maybe the third time I've cried at work in four years, which I think is like a, that's an okay ratio. Um, not that there's a bad ratio. You can cry as many times as you want. Um, but I, this was the third time I cried at work, like directly in front of my boss. And I'm just bawling. And I just scream at him, I need a refrigerator. And he was like, okay. Like, and literally a refrigerator, like a huge refrigerator arrived the next day. And he was like, where do you want it? Um, and so I think like, no matter who you're working for and no matter what the company is, I think Jess has like hit the nail on the head, which is like, you have to ask. Like to no ask. one can know what you want and what yeah. you need in order to um, make it happen. And so, um, and I think Laura mentioned it too, like get a group of women together and be like, this is what women need yeah. um, or this is what, whatever. So um, regardless of the sort of the accolades, I work for an amazing company for moms and we now, I've hired, since I had my child, we have, we now have four working moms who happen to all have kids around my age and we've hung out and, or my kid's age, not my age. Um, <laughs> and we've now become a company that is unbelievably like encouraging for family balance and, and working from home is challenging because of like the physical requirements of our, of our organization. But um, we've turned it into a place that I think people feel like you bring your kids. We have kids around all the time. Um, and, and that happens for my boss too, who is very encouraging to, you know, working from home is challenging, but bring bring Kai, like bring him mm -hmm. to work. I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm bringing Kai to work. Mm -hmm. um, I think you you yeah. need not be at a large organization that like checks off all of these requirements for it to be like a. I'm like shocked you told me you had to piece together like time to get vacation days off. And again, since then, so I would never think that from like seeing Jay and Jay on the list. Yeah, but I think since then, even Jay and Jay has right. made steps in the right direction in terms of gender neutral leave and. Um, and ensuring that the culture, it's not just superficial, that it's almost like embedded into every team. And, and I really do think like most teams across J&J &J yeah. have varied cultures, but I think this notion of like people need family time and there is an importance in well-being and you know that we just as an organization, we don't schedule meetings before eight o'clock or even nine o'clock. We don't schedule anything after five o'clock. Like people respect, I think, or um, have some respect for those like family moments, whether it's morning times and, and, and evening times. So um, I don't know. I feel like very blessed in that sense that I think I've had a really good experience. But um, but I think it is like the accountability. I think is on all of us, especially if you're the pioneer, at whatever organization you might be, to ensure that people know what is what is needed for a work, for it to work for a working parent, and that you continue to create that culture for other parents. That leads into like my last question before we break for Q and A, and I can continue. Um, there are no questions, but I was thinking about how great my manager was for a variety of reasons and how I've spoken his praise like of him to his boss before having a child, mm -hmm. but like since him being a great manager for a working mother, like I haven't promoted him in that way. Have you guys like voiced to your companies like why your manager then is great for this particular thing and is that something that we should be doing at work? Because I'm wondering if that's how organizations learn of mm -hmm. how to create supportive and like enriching environments for working parents, working mothers, is to like start praising the people who do a really good job and explaining why. So I have, I, but I'm also I'm like the biggest proponent of positive feedback as well as negative. I mean, all feedback is, mm -hmm. is good in my opinion because I think everyone should always be yeah. growing. Um, I did have the opportunity. I mean, my my manager happens to be the lead of our like uh, our entire capability for multiple regions, um, and I had the opportunity to work on a pitch with her boss, who's our national lead. And I said, you know, as we were getting to know each other, I mentioned just how unbelievably incredible my manager has been, and I I, I talked about how her understanding and, and support of flexibility um, has really is why I'm still there. 
Um, so I, I, I think, I mean, I don't know how much it makes a difference because she's also just fantastic in general. Um, but I, I do think it's important to, and I told her directly as well. I told her I was doing this panel, and I, I told her I have nothing but positive things to say about her, and that's part of why I would literally hitch my, my horse to her wagon like, anywhere <laughs> ever. Awesome. Very cool. Um, we will get into more if we don't have questions, but I just want to sort of open it up. Um, if anyone in the audience has any questions, feel free to ask or share any stories if they have whatsoever. Um, if there are none, um, a couple other things that I was going to ask you guys. I will say, though, yeah. as I'm hearing you talk about your boss, and, and I think we both work for either men or women, but um, I think historically we'd had this... I don't know, perhaps like negative image of these women bosses who were um, just more demanding and not as organized and more chaotic. With children or without? It doesn't, I mean, okay. it, doesn't, it, didn't, it didn't matter. But I just remember, I mean, I, I worked for seven years before business school and then I remember even back then, um, I think there was still this like stereotypes of like, I worked in consulting and I remember folks saying, I don't want to work for that woman. And I remember, I remember being like really appalled because that's who I wanted to be ultimately, right? But I feel like now I think the conversation has been shifting and changing and these women leaders who um, are really inspiring and especially as we look at women leaders who've had children who are perhaps like more empathetic listeners and perhaps you know, have the ability to connect more on a human level with folks who are hitching their horse in their wagon. I don't know, I'm getting... <laughs> but like... You know, I feel like that's been that's been the case for me. Where like, <laughs> I've had a lot of women leaders who, because of motherhood, perhaps, have become I think like more powerful and more, more empathetic um, and more qualified. I think business leaders, and I am I think like more motivated to follow them anywhere um, because of that. So I think it's just an interesting thing that I think it, the the dynamics and I think the perception has shifted a lot. And I think we need to continue to encourage that. Do you feel though like? perspective and age and then experience all factor into that though because at the time that you probably thought that woman or had heard that she was really scary you were probably in like your early 20s yes. and she was like 30 so yeah she was really scary she didn't have kids yet she probably like had all the time in the world to work and then you get to this age and like you've got your MBA you're older than she was so like all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I but just want to be also, like this nice, not understanding and in some like, ways, person. Was and in some ways, again, like they were battling their own things. Right. So maybe yeah. we were creating those monsters because I we were, we were that in 110%. environments in which they couldn't even be their authentic selves. They were having like probably all these struggles. So I think we're just as, um, I don't know, I think we're just making the right evolution um, to a much more positive place. Where were you? I just, I'm going to just because yeah. I'm class of 84. Yeah. So I, you know, I go back to when I graduated with an MBA and for a woman to be an executive senior leader and have a family, mm -hmm. they were trailblazers. It was a lot harder than that. Mm -hmm. so, I knew those women, I worked with those women, and I have empathy yes. for those women. Yes. Yeah. And I have to say, it's so awesome for me to listen to all of you and see that maybe things haven't changed as much as we all like, like. them to change. But it sounds as though they've changed, yeah. which is great. And I absolutely agree with you with positive feedback. Can I ask a curiosity question? Please. How is it? How, how is the receptivity in your organizations to paternity? So ours actually shifted in the last two years. Um, it used to be so. Again, we've had a number of shifts as we continue to compete with big companies, um, and men actually have the exact same paternity leave now as women at, at our company. So we have anyone who has a child adopted. Mm -hmm. uh, even, I mean, no matter how you have a child, you get three months. Um, and we also, at an agency, we actually get a significant amount of time off, so you can actually really easily tack it on and make it four months. Um, the men tend to take it less upfront, and they take it more sporadic mm -hmm. throughout time. And I will say, while I'm the only mother, we actually have a ton of fathers. Um, I mean, I attribute that more to, we could have a whole other conversation <laughs> about the fact that I think women bear the <clears throat> mental load of the household a lot more than men, mm -hmm. um, I, and I, my manager who has come in in between me and my other the, the wonderful boss, um, 
he's a father of a son who's two, three months younger than mine. Um, and he's very, like, they're all very engaged. The company is very supportive, um, and the teams are very supportive of maternity, paternity leave, people having kids. I, I mean, I think, I think it's just harder to be a mom, and that's just my own personal opinion. Jackie, does your place have paternity leave? We have paternity leave. Um, it's very we have progressive. A lot of hourly here. employees. I mean, I wrote the policy, so. We have paternity leave. <laughs> um, but it isn't as generous. It's not three months. Um, so what we've done is we've set up we set up a family leave that anyone can take, and then there's sort of additional time that they can take over time for paternity. Um, but my boss is a father of two and um, has had a flexible schedule since I've started. So um, he will oftentimes leave. Um, and have lunch with his kids, or he he models a kind of he lives very close by, and he models a behavior that's like, look, I'm gonna I when he came back from his paternity leave, which was just a couple weeks, he was working two days a week for almost a month. So, um, as the founder of an organization, so we've that's awesome. he's modeled I think a really great um, uh, he he's a great example to I think most of our staff, um, yeah. but. We have a little bit of a more formal policy just because we have a lot of hourly employees who. Um, um, yeah, please. Um, so I'm eight months pregnant and about to take maternity leave in a couple of weeks. Congrats. Yay. It is not a vacation. No. <laughs> Succession is also a great show to watch. While you're <laughs> um, and it's my first, and I do have a very generous um, maternity leave, but like, as we. I'm curious, as I think about like the <clears throat> mental shift and like everything that's going to change over that course of time and, and thinking about coming back, is there any sort of advice that you guys can think of is, you know, whether it's mental or whether it's specific strategies at work <laughs> to set you up, but things that you would advise before going on leave and maybe during that leave, if there's anything, like, did you do any thinking about work or was it just completely out the door? Did I ask you guys, did you check in during that leave? Because I believe from your responses, like, you all did. You did not. I don't know. Okay. Did. Yeah, but well, it was light touch. Feel free to. Light touch. Light yeah. touch. I, think, I was like, text me if you need me. Exactly. And they really didn't. And by did the way. Did that make it harder, better, worse when you got back? If you were like, no? Um, there was a period of time where we, like, signed this huge contract, and I could see that something wasn't, like, there were enough text sort of things around it that I was like, this isn't going well. But um, when I came back, it was it was done. Yeah. So no. Laura, what were you going to say? Um, <clears throat> I, I think I had more of a light touch, especially towards um, the tail end when I was about to come back. Um, and I guess it was like twofold. One, it was like strategic to ensure that like I knew where I was coming back to. I, I could get excited. I could get myself excited about the role and like the types of projects I was going to be leading. Um, but two, just so that I could even practice using my own voice, because there's, there comes a time, especially if you're like in La La Land, and I was, I was in the burbs, so yeah. here you are with child, and like maybe you're talking to mommy friends, but you haven't had like a really challenging intellectual conversation in a while. It was sort of good to just start like getting that engine revving up again. Um, so that would be something that also, as you are kind to yourself and kind to your new brain, newly shifted brain, like. Just putting it into practice and just making sure, like, you remember what your voice sounds like at a conference room and, like, because all that stuff I remember being a little bit clunky with my, my especially, like, maybe my second. Um, but then on my third one, I feel like I did enough of that little practice, like, beforehand that I just hit the ground running and um, didn't doubt myself as much. I will say just, uh, it's a somewhat corny phrase, but, like, give yourself grace. I know that's... Mm -hmm. It's, it's something that I really adopted. Um, and I think it was shocking for me and for my entire team. I was a workaholic. I was always online. I was always available, first to respond to things. And I've, I've changed a lot. Mm -hmm. That does not mean that I care any less. I am a thousand times more efficient now than I've mm -hmm. ever been before. But my priorities have shifted to an extent, like to a surprising extent. Um, I will say my team is young, and I still think of them almost, I, I they think of me like a, I'm like a team mom kind of person. Um, but give yourself that space, give yourself grace, and like it, it's all gonna be okay. And it will, I will just add that I did check in because I felt like I needed to get like share of mind and it worked out for me. I had lunch with a woman in an agency recently who told me that on her first kid, she did not, and on her second kid, she did all the time because of things that happened at work while she was gone. 
we were kind of talking about this beforehand. I don't know, like, if you can have sort of like this career and like be a part of big companies without it. I know, like, you didn't, and like your company's smaller, and you like run that thing. But like, stepping back into a larger organization, even though I ran my own brand, like, I was really happy that I didn't seem out of sight, out of mind. That mm -hmm. like I was like in the realm of it. I don't. I don't want to tell everyone <laughs> that they have to check in. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I wanna, I'm a strong voice this one and say, I know. you don't have to check in. And I think that's important to say, like, I didn't check in. Mm. And that's okay. It is so, okay. Yeah. It's like, it's totally yeah. like what you can sleep at yeah. night with and wonder and like know that like, if you're up in the middle of night wondering about it, check in. Mm -hmm. And if you aren't, don't. I mean, I will say, I checked in not in, a, like, I'm pretty sure I did not open my email. Mm -mm. Um, mm -hmm. It was the people who had my personal cell phone number who I'm be I become friends with. You know, I was constantly in touch with like two or three people who have become like true. If I didn't work there anymore, they would still be my friends. Um, I had someone from my team, the person who I was closest with on my team came over and like met my son while I was on maternity leave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and my manager, as I said, had texted me to, to check in on me a few times. Yeah, exactly. I did not check in on the work. It was more when that person on my team came over with a bottle of champagne and we <laughs> drank that whole bottle. Um, I was like, tell me about what, what disasters have happened since I've been gone. And it was, I laughed about them. Like, it was out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. By the um, way, legally, yeah. I don't know if they're allowed to be checking no. in with you on no. We're still like, so, no. I mean, that's yes. a whole nother discussion. So I mean, I, with I was, my boss was like, leave, like, go. But yeah. I was like, mm, no. Um, but sorry, quick tidbit on, on allowing yourself grace. I probably have to share the story just on, on mushy brain alone. One day, I came to work. This was like eight months. I guess like my son was about eight months. So it's like two months of being back to work, like not enough sleep at night. Probably noon at some point, someone, one of my sales strategy guys looks down and was like, bueno, are you supposed to be wearing those two boots together? <laughs> and I look down, I've already spent half a day at work. And I'm wearing a black boot and a brown boot, like <laughs> full blown, probably slightly different heel sizes. And I was like, "Yeah, that just happened," and just you know, wrote it out the rest of the day. But and I feel like we have time for one. one more question. Okay, I saw him back. The one, there are two. One thing I want to just point out with even like this discussion, it's not lost on me, and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to get people together is that you are responsible for like getting pregnant getting to in front of your boss to like tell them about the way you're gonna package up your mat leave, worrying about whether or not you're gonna check in or not, and then figuring out how you're gonna come back and take on the mental load of your household and make sure that people at work realize that like you haven't like missed, like, it's a lot. And so that's one of the reasons why I feel like having my stern network at my thumbs fingertips, like, mm -hmm. you know, was so instrumental and why I think there's an opportunity to keep on using it as a resource. There were two questions then, so feel free, yeah. Um, I have a question. So I work in a 25-person company, and it's Marshall Kitchen, I'm pregnant, and do you okay? We're hiring. Um, <laughs> and and uh, I have so much anxiety about coming in a closet and having to keep my milk in like, the gross fridge and like the 22-year-old like, boys that I work with being so freaked out. Yeah. Can you talk about working at a company where the infrastructure is just like not really there and how you navigate that if you also were anxious about it? Because I have like, a couple months to go, and it's like all oh. Is this where you talk about how many pumps you had? <laughs> three pumps. I had three pumps. Wait, two, no, four. I ended up with four. I ended up with the, uh, well, I won't do any. You talk plug. offline about that after. It's over champagne. My, my plug or a mocktail. Or my, um, <clears throat> so I started out in a closet. I also have a lot of young men that work for me. And the idea of them thinking about me in a room without a shirt on, I was just like, no, they don't need to know. So I was very secretive about it. Um, there's. Natasha, who's in the room, taught me a very great hack early on, which was hack your body to do what you want your body to do, and your body will do it. And so I did a lot of pumping at night, actually, like before bed. So I, by, like, by halfway between my, by, by like, I pumped for a year, I would say three months into pumping at work, I was only pumping once a day at work. And so that doesn't answer your question, but like, because the infrastructure stank, I, I made it work. And it really did, and I exclusive like my my kid didn't what I, whatever you want to choose, but like I felt I'm working like natural food, I'm weird like that. So, my, I was able to do exactly what I wanted to do. Is kind of the summary. Um, I did ask for a refrigerator. Asked for a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. People are going to be a little afraid of you. Your boss will be a little afraid of you. And my boss was like, okay, whatever you need. Um, and 
I'm not saying you work that to your advantage, but yeah, maybe I need that. Like I need that. You don't know. I know it's what I need. And so lay it out. Um, I, I think in terms of infrastructure at a 25 person company legally, they don't actually have to, there's certain, there's a certain size that they have to provide you with a room. Um, and we can talk about the legal end of that because I've done a lot of research on it, not for my own pregnancy, but because of the company that I run. Um, but I ended up with a WeWork pass. Um, my boss helped me with that. And so it was really relatively inexpensive. And I had one relatively close to me. And so when I couldn't make it work in the building, I actually left. And they had a really lovely lactation room. Um, it took a little longer. And I had to you know, walk the 10 minutes. And I lost 10 minutes on either side. But that was another option. Um, that really worked well for me. And that was a total creative solution mm -hmm. that you had that you proposed back. I wasn't working. Like the, the gross room and the milk spilling wasn't working. And so there, it just, yeah. And it's, there's a lot of like relatively inexpensive ways of fixing it um, that aren't a room. Um, we talked about conference rooms in a different location, et cetera, renting them from a nearby wherever. We work really worked for me. Um, so. That's yeah. an amazing WeWork plug. Uh, they oh needed that right now, too. Good oh. job. Are they even alive? <laughs> there is a great brand. I don't remember what it is. I could look it up. That makes these really discreet. N no, but they make that. these really discreet, like, pumping bags and these bags that, like, where it flips out and it has a very sterile side where I you can put pump. your pump parts down. I have it. It wasn't the pump. No, no, it was the pump. It was, like, pump parts. And that, yes. yes. Yes, and I kept all of my milk in the bottles in that bag, and it was not a clear plastic bag, so people weren't like scared of it in the fridge. I, although we had nice pumping rooms with separate yeah. fridges, but I can't really. We can set you up with some emails in case you have specific questions. Yeah, we can go. There was one question. I'll tell you the whole plan. Yeah. Yeah. Not alone. I think most yeah. people probably so, are. I'm wondering at what point can I bring that up to someone that doesn't know my experience or you know doesn't have like have that background there or doesn't know who you trust me. So I will say it's something I've considered, but I haven't because it's still working for me. Um, but. I, again, like I said, I'm a big proponent of transparency within, within reason, right? So in the first interview, I wouldn't go in and be like, what's your work from home policy? I would say as you're getting further along in getting to know the company and the company getting to know you, if this is something that's important to you, um, I would ask about it. Because if it's not going to work, you want to know that that's not going to work. I don't think if you're a candidate, as someone who's hired a lot of people over my almost seven years at Digitas, if you're someone that they want to hire, you asking about that is not going to stop you from getting the job. Um, but what will stop like the whole situation from working is if you aren't transparent about something that's really important to you um, and you get hired at a place where it's not going to work out. So I, I yeah, that's, that's my, my advice. I would only add to that and say, like, give, I love my job flexibility so much and the fact that we're remote, and I often will go back to my manager or other people on my team, giving specific examples of how I've leveraged it. So like, they will get emails from me at five o'clock in the morning or at certain things. And it's like, I'll always have specific examples of how I use that to my advantage and why I was more productive about it and be very specific. And so that's something I could potentially recommend is. I'm more productive with my international team because I've logged in early and I juggle. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I had a few questions. Um, my son's going to be two at the end of January, and I'm curious, looking back, I've read different articles that maybe I should have pushed to have my review before I left for maternity leave. Mm -hmm. And I was curious if you had any experience with that. Um, and then I was also curious, it's more like a logistical thing. I had a hard time coming back and like the wardrobe and what to wear. And like, you know, you're pumping, if you had any advice around that. And then 
you know, I think there's that hesitation when you think about, oh, maybe it'd be nice to have a sibling, but it's so hard to make it work with just one. So it's, you know, more specific question. But How does she do it with three? Yeah. I have no oh, idea yeah. at all. No idea. Oh, you my should gosh. take the first one. Yeah. The first one you did it so well. was about I, 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 the review. The review. Yes, the review. You did it so well. Timing, oh, timing of the review. I'm, I'm going back. Give, give me a second because I, I mean, I did like a whole presentation about when I was pregnant about like and my she maternity had a number, leave. You had a number in mind, and you're like, "This is what I need to make before I leave." And you were, yeah. I, our the way our like, I, I don't actually have like very specific advice, but we could talk offline mm -hmm. because like I, I did say, go into like a review with like a certain number and stuff. But the way that it was timed was that like my review was a few months after I returned from, was almost actually like a whole year. So we'll talk offline about that for sure. I will say I've given, so we have our year end reviews around October. Um, and I have given some advice to women that there are like better times in the year to go out just simply because you know, you're top of mind, you're there for like a long period of time, but it's not always controllable. Like for, for women who are sort of like planning families, I'm like, hey, optimal times that I've seen for other people play out well. Um, Add but that I, to the checklist of other things but you have like, to think about. You know, uh, like some folks are dealing with IVF, some folks are dealing right. with other, so I, I don't know if that's something that you can always manage. Um, but I will say I, before every, I mean, I think this is just sort of my work style, but I think like over communicating and ensuring that there's visibility to all the awesome work that you're doing, not only so that it's easy for someone to like pick up and go after you're gone, but also so that you leave your mark and people know like that these projects would not have happened had it not been for you. And so even if you're only there for six months out of the year for that calendar year of a review period, um, you know, you have a lot to, to be able to quantify and tell. I insisted on getting a review before I went out. Um, I will really say, I, I, I mean, our review system has changed like five times since I've been there. So mm -hmm. it's, I, I've learned at this point, like, again, you ask for what you need. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that makes me sound kind of demanding, but yeah. it, it's. Why I, did you do that? So I knew that I was due for a promotion. Um, okay. And I wanted to make sure that I was top of mind for that promotion. I will say. I was passed over for a, the round of promotions that happened while I was out on leave, which, legal or not, that's a whole other discussion. Okay. Um, I will say that I was promoted upon my return. Um, okay. And that was also discussed during that very casual drinks yep, yep. with my manager. Okay. Um, but I wanted to make sure there was something in the system that said, like, she is ready for a promotion. Um, and that that was very clearly documented. Smart. About the wardrobe thing, it's like you get five things, five, that's it. That's all you're gonna wear for like until you can see straight. Until you can like we all have had like clothing yep. issues and stuff. But like are you that. saying wardrobe planning for or returning from? I mean returning from more Terrible. I, I Actually, will say terrible. like <laughs> those, the the what like the leak pad things were my mm. best friends. Mm -hmm. I hated those. The one day I didn't like, bring those, so that was not mm -mm. Yeah. that was not pleasant for anyone in the office. I wore like an airplane sweater, like it's called the airplane sweater, and my boss just like called it my pregnancy sweater, and I basically just hid under it, even upon returning back. There's like I, I did when I rewatched the fifth trimester, like Google Talk. She, Lauren Smith Brody, made a very good recommendation upon getting like those handful of clothes. Just put them like mm -hmm. front and center in your wardrobe, and don't waste any time in the morning thinking about what you're gonna wear. That's just like true. put it on and get out. Um, but I remember like us like texting like our group of friends, being like. Are there brands for clothes that are like mm -hmm. not like pregnancy or things that we wore like ten years ago? Like it was a whole other thing to like shop like a year after having a baby and to like yeah. find professional clothes was a challenge. If you need brands, <laughs> I think that all of us have like finally like gotten back on track with like brands we recommend. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden my Instagram feed is filled with yeah. like no nonsense working mom clothes, like yeah. modern citizen. I'm like, yeah. great. So I will say there's there's definitely been like dark periods where it was just like pure survival mode. I think at some point I said like if something would happen to me today, like my autobiography might be like the unintentional ombre because it was just like two different color hairs. Like I just was not taking care of myself. Um, so I do think we all need to just like figure out how to practice some self care, and every once in a while, like if you want to get a little bit more dialed up for work, and like, you know, start like reinvesting in yourself. I think I've found that like, 
just most recently, I've become a little bit more like invested in like, hey, presence matters, and if and like just being recent, fully present, being fully present, but also presence and the way you pre you're presenting yourself. And if you walk into work and mentally you're a little bit messy because you're still thinking about your kids and you did drop off, or you're still thinking about your nanny and you're not mentally not there, but then in addition to that. Your hair's not looking good, and you're, you know, just you're just like a little bit of a mess externally. I think it's going to say a lot about you. So I think just doing a li doing a little bit of that self care can also just play out. I think more favorably. It's like an honest piece of feedback because it's I like just, sometimes I look at people. Dads don't have to think about that. I no, mean, that's like it's, that's you know, the they do, thing, but it's that. true. <laughs> they definitely do. But it's. Some of them don't, yeah. but they should. Okay. To That's me, true. I think it's become a little bit of like putting my oxygen mask on first. And so sometimes in the morning, I'll wake up a little bit earlier and, mm -hmm. and like, I don't know, just invest a little bit more time in me, whether it's Pelotoning, yes, I'm mm -hmm. a Peloton mom and the burbs, um, or just like doing a little bit more in my hair because I know there's going to be some like important people in the building and I want to make sure mm -hmm. that like they could see me in that conference room leading that meeting. At least they saw that you look like you got your shit together. Yeah, yeah. So I think it helps. It helps like complete the package. But I don't know if we got to your other question about Multiple. the multiples. Um, by the way, I think like parenting and work-life balance wisdom is not commensurate with number of kids. I think I'm I'm just starting to figure out some things now, even with child number three. So I think the little knowledge or yeah. wisdom that we're even sharing is is. Um, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But I, to me, it was just, it was not a binary, like, decision. I knew that I wanted a family, and my work needed to flex and mold around that. And I've, I've just, that's sort of been my mindset. And I'm going to make it work. And, yeah, there's going to be some bumps along the way. And, and you've been at J&J &J since you graduated yes. from Stern. So it's yes. been, like, seven years. Yes. And, and has that been roles. instrumental to then helping build your family is the fact that you've had this, like, great place I Where think so, yeah. I think the fact that it's a great corporate <laughs> culture um, and that I've been able to build a strong reputation for my work um, and that I've been able to sort of advance to different roles within the organization, whether it was on Avino or Band-Aid or, or Listerine, working on things that I, that, that I actually was really passionate about, um, but that kids were going to come along the way and I had senior leaders who supported me and who believed in me and who wanted me back, right, after I went on that leap, which I think really, really helped um, but yeah, it's going to be chaotic, especially I think I was saying from one, I was telling someone like one to two, I mean, I think one is already game changer. One to two feels like a lot. Um, but two to three guys, I got to tell you, it's just, <laughs> it's just sort of like icing. It's like incremental chaos. And like you, you sort of just at that point, you're like, I am so excited to commute out of my house, but yeah. some things had to change. At some point, I think I was doing two drop offs at daycare and I mean, walking out of the house with, I think, eight bags, because it was like my work bag, my pump bag, bag number one, bag number two. It was just a lot, and I was doing it solo because my husband leaves to come into the city um, early in the mornings. And I just remember feeling so much tension in my back, like even driving to work and then driving home from work. Even if you leave at 5.30, like you have two hungry kids. I have an hour commute, two hungry kids in the car, and I remember just like you getting home. You have an hour home. commute? Yeah. Like getting home <laughs> with these two little people that were like starving, and at some point, I think my role shifted to New Brunswick from Princeton. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to rethink some things. And I think that's we should all allow ourselves to like yeah. hit the reset button. Like, what's got to give? What's got to change? And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to consider a nanny. And, and it was like night and day. Because all of a sudden, I had to prep stuff, sure. But I could walk out. And yeah. I remember feeling the tension in my neck yeah. just sort of slowly melting. Because I'm like, now I can enjoy my commute. I was podcasting. Yeah. I love my commute now. It's I know. Like Kid-free commute, commute is just um, amazing. When did your partners go back to work? Like, were you on leave longer than your partners? The day I got out of the hospital. The day after I got out of the hospital. He my husband didn't have a paternity leave. He didn't take one. Yeah. My husband's leave was very, very generous, like almost more generous than mine. Mm. Um, and so, but I planned it all out. So I was like, you're going to take the first three weeks with me, mm -hmm. and then you're going to take the last two weeks. And we actually, big hot take mm -hmm. is take a trip at the mm. end of your maternity leave, like a oh. long one. Oh um, and then I asked my husband to take the week that I went back to work off, um, which really I think is a, a great hot take and something that I highly recommend because I think that historically that's a very, very hard day for moms, and I knew that was a very hard day mm -hmm. for moms. 
And it wasn't hard for me because I was like, bye, because I knew that my kid was in good hands and my son was with his dad. So yeah. that was. I, I will add, even though I'm not, I mean, we're not on number two yet. I will say we're, we're talking about it, but we're not, we're not there yet. But I do have the same plans to ask for what I need. And we've already, like, we've already started talking about because we're talking about switching my, my son to a different nursery school starting next year. And it will be a longer commute for him. And the only way to make it work when there's then an infant involved, I was like, well, I'm going to have to do drop off. My husband goes to work much earlier than mm -hmm. me. So I'm going to have to go to my manager, my team, and be like, I can't do 9 a.m. meetings anymore. That's just mm -hmm. not going to be feasible. And again, this is what I need to make this work. That's, I mean, at least how I am going to approach it. Sometimes I'm sure there will be issues, but if they want me there, which I think they do after this time, I mean, mm. they'll, they'll, we will all figure out a way to make it work. This is why having a network of people to ask, I didn't even know that was like something you had to think about, except I kind of did. And then she just like thought of it for me. And now like that just saves me like a whole Instagram direct message of like, oh, that's what happens if you have a second kid. You can't do 9 a.m. meetings anymore. Um, mm -hmm. That's where the nursery school is, but yeah. So um, we're more or less out of time for this portion because that means there's time for drink champagne and mocktails and gin and tonics if anyone wants them or red wine. Um, and we are all around for questions afterwards, um, especially if you have more specifics. So please don't hesitate to pull us aside. And with so many MBA grads here too, everyone else who's here to offer up their valuable resources. Um, so with that said, I just wanna thank so much Laura, Jess, and Jackie for offering up their time and expertise. Cause it's not easy to like tell those stories to a group of people. Um, so thank you very much. And thank you to everyone for coming and please like enjoy some beverages. So, and thank you, Jess. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.